Gaius Julius Caesar was the son of a Gaius Julius Caesar, and the grandson of the Gaius Julius Caesar who brokered a power marriage between his daughter, Julia, and wealthy new man, Gaius Marius, whose career had stalled at Praetor. The marriage of a poor patrician girl with the greatest family name to a wealthy military man of no background was a gamble both hoped would launch the political rise of their respective families. The gamble paid off. Gaius Marius became known as the third founder of Rome, and Julia's brothers became the first of their family to reach high office in two centuries. Gaius Julius Caesar was born during his uncle Marius's unheard of sixth consulship. He began his life the same year that Saturninus met his grisly end on the floor of the Senate House. Caesar's mother, Aurelia Cotta, came from top-shelf plebeian, political nobility. Both her father and her grandfather had won election as consul. Like plebeian tribune, Marcus Livius Drusus, Aurelia's uncle was the same Publius Rutilius Rufus who had been targeted by the Publicani, and exiled to Smyrna around 92 BC. It is not difficult to imagine that the Cotta side of Caesar's family supported both Drusus and Rutilius Rufus. Because Caesar's father, like most Roman nobility, spent much of his career absent from Rome, Caesar's education, along with the education of his two elder sisters, fell to Aurelia Cotta. The historians tell us that Aurelia was highly regarded in Rome. Tacitus says she was the ideal Roman matron, who provided her children with the best education opportunities available. Plutarch describes her as a woman of discretion, renowned for her beauty, intelligence, and fierce independence. She was a strict mother whose character he likened to that of Cornelia, mother of the Gracchi, both of whom had reared the greatest of sons. Caesar's father, and his father's brother, Sextus Caesar, both became attached to the offices of Gaius Marius upon the marriage of their sister, Julia, to the wealthy new man. As young military tribunes, they served in Numidia under Gaius Marius. It's likely they continued their service as questors to Marius during the German invasion. By Marius's fifth overall consulship, Caesar's father had become the first in their family to attain high office in over 200 years by winning election as praetor around 92 BC. He was afterwards granted the province of Asia to govern. Caesar's uncle Sextus reached the consulship in 91 BC, where he became one of the targets of the Alban Mount assassination plot which decimated the career of Marcus Livius Drusus. In 88 BC, after Sulla, duly elected senior consul of Rome, left the city to meet his legions outside the city of Nola, Caesar's uncle Marius pulled another political sleight of hand. Prompting his plebeian tribune, Publius Sulpicius Rufus, to call an assembly of the people, Marius arranged to have command of the war against Mithridates stripped from Sulla and reassigned to himself. We can only imagine how this move affected the twelve-year-old Caesar. Was he awestruck by the living legend that was his uncle? Or did he feel his uncle had cheated the consul? We do not know. The Senate, however, was anything but awestruck. They erupted over Marius's underhanded tactics, causing the Senate's already polarized division between the Populares and the Optimates to widen even further. But the sitting consul refused to capitulate to the will of a selfish people who had proven, time and again, that their loyalty could be bought with nothing more than promises of free food, land, and debt relief. Exactly 666 years after the founding of the city, Lucius Cornelius Sulla became the first general to invade Rome at the head of an army. He immediately executed about a dozen or so senators who were involved with the unconstitutional removal of his command. Plebeian tribune, Sulpicius Rufus, was decapitated, and his head was displayed on the rostra alongside the heads of Marius's other supporters. Although Marius, and his son, Marius the Younger, had managed to escape the city with some supporters, Sulla forced the Senate to officially exile them in their absence. Caesar's uncle, the one-time third founder of Rome, was now exiled from Rome, and labelled a criminal. This obligated every Roman citizen within the empire to turn Marius in, inform on him, or even kill him if they were able. Not yet a man, it's completely believable that Caesar, like most of the rest of Rome's youth, would have been kept safely indoors during Sulla's military occupation of the city. It is doubtful that the pre-teen Caesar would have been in any real danger, despite his father's high position within the Marian regime. 
Romans did not make a habit of avenging themselves against the minor children of their political rivals. But, Caesar's situation was still tenuous. His uncle, cousin, and possibly even his father, had fled to Africa, where Marius's veteran colonies ensured Marius's ability to raise new legions with which to deal with Sulla. And though Caesar, still in his minority, would not have been held accountable for his family's actions, each year would bring him closer to the age of majority, and with it, the life and death responsibilities for his family's political affiliations.